self-interest, laissez-faire capitalism, and individual rights. Yaron Brook, executive director of the Ayn Rand Institute, invites you to the conversation. The Yaron Brook Show starts now on AM 560. The answer. All right. Uh, we have a new president, guys. Donald Trump is president of the United States, and uh, I assume most of you heard the uh, inauguration address uh, yesterday, his speech yesterday. Uh, interesting, interesting. Um, very consistent with everything he ran on, very consistent with his campaign themes and with his campaign rhetoric and his campaign mood, if you will. Uh, but I want to talk about one aspect of the speech and, and one of his executive orders that followed. You know, one of the first executive orders that Donald Trump issued yesterday, I think he, 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 only, he did a few, but, but one of the first ones was declaring a National Day of Patriotism. A National Day of Patriotism. Now, I don't know exactly what that's going to mean and what, what that is. It's, is it a holiday? Do I get to not go to work that day? Uh, you know, we'll, we'll still see what exactly you mean. But one of the themes of the speech yesterday, very much so a theme of the speech, was the need and uh, the, the virtue of patriotism. It, it, you know, patriotism is going to unite us all. Patriotism is going to make us all feel like one, and we should all be incredibly patriotic. So I want to ask you today, I want to ask you today, is patriotism a good thing? Is patriotism a good thing? Always? Under what circumstances? Is, what does it mean to be patriotic? What is it, what kind of actions does it lead to? So I mean, I'm curious, what, what do you guys think? Is patriotism a good thing? You can call in 312-642-5600. Is, for example, is, for example, buying American? Let's buy American. I mean. Trump is big on buy American, build America, you know, everything has to be made in America, produced in America, sold in America, American companies, American individuals making it. Is all that good? Is it good as a consumer to buy American? Is that patriotic? Is patriotism consist of, for example, buying American? If it does, then why? And if it doesn't, what does patriotism consist of? What, what does it mean to be patriotic? You can call in. You're listening to your Ron Brooks Show, 312-642-5600. I'm interested. I'm interested to hear what you have to say about the meaning, uh, the meaning of patriotism. And, and should one be patriotic? Should one be patriotic? Today, in America today, in a post-President Obama uh, America, in a Donald Trump America, is patriotism right? Does it make sense? Is it just? And are there circumstances in which you would not be patriotic? Are there circumstances in which you would say, yeah, I don't know, well, what is patriotism? I think patriotism is a love of country. Basically, let's just think about it basically, a love of country. Um, and to love something means to choose it. So it's to love your chosen country, your chosen country. That's what I take patriotism to be. Patriotism is the love of your chosen country, usually as of your residence, right? So is that right? So are all of you patriots, are all of you patriots, if my definition is right, and you can call and disagree about my definition, a love of country that is chosen then if that's right, are you guys patriots? Because how many of you, how many people out there, don't take this personally, but how many people out there have chosen to be Americans? How many people out there have chosen to be Americans? How many of you, at whatever age, you know, 18 and above, sat down and said, I want to I, I choose the country I'm going to live in for the rest of my life. I want to live in the best damn country in the world. And I want to, I'm, you know, I'm going to find a place that, you know, that's best for me. And I, you know, and that's going to generate, I'm going to love that place because it's good for me. I wonder how many people 
that happen to because most of us most of us are born into a country like america and we don't know anything else we don't choose it it chooses us fate chooses it right most of us don't even think about what is a good country what isn't a good country is our country good isn't our country good most of the kind of questions nobody ever really asks we just accept the country you're born in we become so-called patriotic about our country but that's a kind of a mindless patriotism that's just an accident of both patriotism that's not real patriotism so yeah 90 percent of americans love america but do they know what america is Ooh, there's a question what is america is america just the, the geography do we love america because we love the geography is that what patriotism represents i don't think so i think patriotism refers to to, to the government to the state when you're patriotic it's because you love your country and its political system and is that true of every country if i was born in nazi germany would i be a patriot in nazi germany if i was born in mao's china would i want to be a patriot of mao's china would i love the country i might like the scenery i might love the language i might love the food but to love the country is to love its political institutions and everything that they imply and i wouldn't love china and i wouldn't love germany under those regimes right so a country needs to be worthy of one's love a country needs to be worthy of one's love and then it's a question of is a particular country worthy and then does one choose to go live in that country and 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 manifest that love all right we got nathaniel calling and nathaniel he agrees with donald trump what's up nathaniel well yes i do because thank you your rod for the first time in my lifetime we're actually going to have a president that cares about americans that puts america first and that hires americans you know we have had people all over the world taking care of it's time to take care of our people here at home so donald trump has he has my vote he has my support and buy american and build american and invest in america that's what that's what is this is about is is being patriotic and yeah. i don't know what even ann Rand could have to say against that <laughs> a lot <laughs> so you know none of that is really true right i mean it's not the job of the government it's not the job of the government to to take care of people it's not a job, to, job of the government to take care of us. The job of the government is to protect us, to protect our rights, to leave us alone so that we live our lives as we see fit. And part of that is... So our jobs are lost. You don't, you're not getting... It's not our jobs. There are no the such thing as leader. American jobs. It's my job. There's your job, Nathaniel, and the other people's jobs. And it's, it, the government's job, the government's responsibility, the essence of what a government is, is not to protect our jobs, as Donald Trump would claim, as now Nathaniel would claim. The job of government is to protect us from coercion, is to protect us from forces, protect us from authority being enforced on us. It's to allow us to be free. The whole point of government is to facilitate freedom, is to leave us alone so we can, we can live our lives as we see fit. And so I should be able to buy goods in, from China, from Japan, from Timbuktu. It's none of anybody's business whose goods I buy. And America first is a distortion if what is meant by america is this empty false patriotism of a geographic location but this this is an important issue and thanks nathaniel thanks for calling but i want to talk about what is america because i think this is really important and then we're gonna we're gonna bump into a break here what is america when you say i love america what do you mean i love the people i love the geography i you know what is it about america that i love what I love about America is what America represents. America represents individualism. And the reason I love Americans as people is they live individualism. They are the manifestation of individualism. The idea that the individual is what counts. It's, it's that your personal identity, your moral worth, your rights, your freedoms belong to you. Not because you're a member of some race, class, nation, or some kind of collective, but because you have inalienable rights because you are the moral entity involved. And you should be judged based on your actions, your values, your virtues, not based on accidental 
where you were born, for example. So if America means individualism, the respect for the moral worth of individual, the respect for the freedom of the individual, right? a respect for the rights of the individual, then I love America because I love individualism. And I want to see it flourish and I want to see it success. Right? So I'm a patriot if America represents individualism because I'm a patriot. I love a country that is individualistic. But as America fades, as America becomes more collectivistic, less individualistic, I'm going to be less of a patriot. All right. You're listening to your own book show. We'll be right back after this break to talk more about patriotism. Stuck in traffic? We've got the answer from the AM560 Traffic Center. I'm Ken Griffin taking a look at roadways in Tinley Park. 159th closed off between 84th and 80th Avenue. Multi-car wreck with a rollover in Elgin. We've got a crash at Chicago. And uh, State Street and Willow Road. Loud and clear, Yara. And Excellent. Uh, little Stan yelling. Because of the delay right now on the uh, inbound. What's that? Uh, not inbound Eden, rather, but outbound a little slow. We can hear you loud and clear. Just a little over modulated every now and then. Uh, you know, radio, audio, geek. Uh, to the junction. Okay, I'll, uh, I'll, I'll, I'll try to lower the volume just a tad. Actually reported there, stop and go from Wolf Road. Okay, it's, it's really in by right uh, not a big problem. Post office. And about 27 from uh, Mannheim to the uh, post office. Stevenson slows as you approach the downtown area. Outbound is heavy from Ashland to uh, Kenzie. 55, got a wreck at Veterans Parkway on the outbound side. AM 560 weather, partly cloudy with a low of 36, currently 59. Next update in 15 minutes on AM 560. The answer. Sean Hannity warns of more cyber attacks. It's ridiculous that we're, we're this far along. Ten years of hacking has taken place, and they haven't done a damn thing. That ought to anger everybody. Well, Hannity, you interviewed Julian Assange. He releases hacked information. He's telling us it's wide open. If we'd learned from it, he wouldn't have anything left to print. It's not his fault they're so stupid. The Sean Hannity Show. Afternoons at 2, right before Joe Walsh at 5, on AM 560. The Answer. Ayn Rand was a radical thinker whose philosophical novels challenged students to reconsider their views on fundamental issues. The Fountainhead, Atlas Shrugged, and Anthem. These works have become classics of American literature that never fail to engage young people and stimulate intense classroom discussion. By offering these works for free to teachers, the Ayn Rand Institute hopes to encourage greater awareness and understanding of Rand's stimulating perspective. If you're a teacher who would like Ayn Rand's books in your classroom, visit Ayn Rand.org. This is at no cost to you. Go to Ayn Rand.org today. Somewhere in America, at just this moment, as you sit listening to this radio show, there's a young person waiting to discover Ayn Rand's novels, waiting to have his or her life changed by the beauty of Ayn Rand's art and the logic of her ideas. Through ARI's Free Books to Teachers program, we have delivered more than 3 million copies of Ayn Rand's books to schools in every state. You can help us reach young minds today. Make your tax-deductible contribution now at aynrand.org support. You know, here at Air for Relief Factor, I encourage you to give it a try. It's all about getting rid of the inflammation if your body, if you're tired of having your back just ache and ache, your ankles do the same, your toes throb, your knees rebel, then you need to go to relieffactor.com right now and give it a try. It is nature's pharmacy, packaged in an easy-to-use group of supplements that make all the difference in the world. Put down the Aleve, put down the ibuprofen, pick up relieffactor.com. Nature's got an apothecary of everything you need to fight inflammation. Don't take those over the counter. They're bad for you. You can't take them every single day. You can, however, take relieffactor.com. You'll find detailed product information at relieffactor.com and you get your first order at 1995. Watch and look at all of the listener testimonials that have come in. relieffactor.com wants you to give it a try. Learn more about the product and their three-week quick start for just 1995. Yeah, and come one day back. closer to inflammation-free living. relieffactor.com, relieffactor.com. Intrigued, inspired, and possibly even angered. Welcome back to the Yaron Brooks Show on AM560, The Answer. All right, we are talking about patriotism today. And I know I know a lot of you out there have various views about this issue, so I encourage you to call me, call me, 312-642-5600. Are you a patriot? Are you a patriot? When it comes to America, are you a patriot? And what does that mean to you? What does it mean to you when you say, I am a patriot? Does it just mean kind of blood and soil and the flag and I love the flag? Or what does it mean? What, what does America mean to you? What does it represent to you? Again, just, just 
the particular people that happen to be here right now and the particular geography? Or does it mean something more to you? And I said, to me, it means something a lot more. To me, it means something a lot more. It means a, an idea of human liberty and human freedom, of individual rights and individualism. But are you a patriot? 312-642-5600. Does that mean you go to war to fight for the country? Is that what a patriot does? What does a patriot do? What does it mean to say, I'm patriotic? 312-642-5600. And finally, is buying American patriotic? Is buying American good for America? Okay. So, I, you know, don't let Nathaniel be the only caller. Uh, patriotism, you know, it's, it's again, it's, it's a love of the country you choose to live in. Now, I happen to be a patriot. I love America. I fight almost daily for America. I believe that America represents something. It's an idea. It's this idea of individualism, of freedom, of individual rights. And I'm willing to fight for those rights. Fight over the radio. Fight in person. Luckily, I don't have to go to war yet with, uh, with guns and ammunition in order to do it. But I'm not willing to just fight for America no matter what. If America was a bad country, if, 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 if America turned into a bad country that did not respect rights and freedom and liberty, I don't want to fight for it. Right? I would choose a different country. I would get up and pack and leave. Would any of you leave America if, if, if you thought fighting for it was no longer possible, if freedom was not possible? What, what, what would be your breaking point? Would you, you know, other lefties always say, oh, if Donald Trump gets elected, I'm going to move to Canada. And I know some conservatives have said, if Hillary Clinton is going to win, I'm going to move to Canada. How many of you would actually move to Canada, Canada or wherever, New Zealand or wherever your dream place is? I, for one, if the country got bad enough, would move. I've moved already. I can say I'm a patriot, partially because I, as compared to most of you, I chose to live here. I chose to live here. I wasn't born here. I'm an immigrant. One of my... One of the things I think that is so horrible about the demonization of immigrants, demonization of immigrants, is the fact that immigrants, in many respects, are the true patriots. They come here because they want to live here. Most of us were born here, and it's all we know. It's all we know. It's not that we chose. This is it. We're Americans because we're Americans because we were born that way. Luck of the draw. So I have a huge amount of respect for immigrants who choose to live here, who choose to make a life here, who choose to raise their kids here, and, of course, who are productive and good people. All right, we get Angelo, who I guess is – I'm missing the point, or he's missing the point. I don't know. What's up, Angelo? How are you doing, Al? I was just listening to your show. The only thing I have to say is I think what he means by make America great is that all these other countries can import their stuff here, and we have a totally free market. Yet when we import our stuff over there, for example, to China, we're taxed, there's tariffs. And I think what he's trying to say is we should have that same respect with your stuff. If you're going to bring it over here, we should use the same taxes and tariffs that you use against us when we bring our stuff over there. Yeah. Our markets are always open. Our markets are always free, yet when we want to put our product into your country, we're faced with a huge amount of tariffs and a huge amount of taxes. That's what I think puts America back a little bit. And what he wants to do is bring America forward and make it an even playing field. Yeah, so let's let's talk about that, Angela, because you're right. I mean, that's what he means by it. And, and uh, you're right in the sense that America has some of the lowest tariffs in the world. It's not free. And, uh, and we have uh, some very high tariffs, for example, on steel and other things. But generally... We have very low tariffs, yet other countries have higher tariffs, like China. But that is not good. It's not good for America to mimic what China does. Because who pays the higher tariffs that China has? The Chinese do. What China is doing when it raises tariffs is screwing their own people. It's making their own people worse off. And we, Americans, are benefiting enormously from the fact that we can buy relatively cheap things from China, from Japan, from Germany, from these other countries, because our government is not taxing us. Tariffs are just a tax. As a consequence, we have more money left over to buy other things. Some of them made in America, some of them made elsewhere, but to raise our standard of living. 
some of that money that we get to keep, we get to invest in our own businesses and grow those businesses and employ people and so on. But also beyond that, when, when we buy stuff from China, they get dollar bills. What do they do with those dollar bills? Well, there are only two things they have they can do with those dollars. They can either buy American stuff and put the dollars back into the United States, and that's export, and then they pay tariffs and they pay, a fa- and they pay taxes, and that's not good for them. Or they can invest the money in the United States, like buying government bonds or buying some of our real estate or, or buying some of our industry, and then they're investing in the country. So this whole issue of tariffs, I mean, with all due respect to Donald Trump, he doesn't know economics. He's just all unbelievably ignorant. The best policy for America, if you want to really make America first in the sense of benefiting the American people, we should have zero tariffs and the rest of the world can do whatever they want with their own tariffs. But we, for Americans, the best policy is zero tariffs. And this is, this is basic economics that was proved by Adam Smith 240 years ago in his famous book, The Wealth of Nations. Every economist in the world today agrees with this. And Donald Trump is going back to a mercantilist, anti-capitalist view of trade. So America first, America first would mean zero tariffs, not, uh, not, um, not Trump's policy of tariffs. That's, that's a real bad. If the Chinese want tariffs, bad for them. It, 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 you know, it's indifferent for us. I just, think, I just think if America starts reinvesting in their factories, in their workmanship, and start leaving it in America, I think we're going to compete and jobs are going to be created. And I think the lower class and the working class people are going to have good wages. And I just think that 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 can't be bad for America. Well, it is. It's very bad for America if we do that by uh, by uh, increasing tariffs and by restricting people's ability um, to export and import. Uh, If we do it by reducing regulations, if we do it by reducing taxes, if we do it by reducing, uh, 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 you know, the, the, all the regulations on, on uh, labor laws and all the regulations on starting a business and all the crap that the government forces down businesses' throats, if we start investing because of that, that would be great. But look, we today employ more people than ever before, and we produce, in terms of manufacturing, more stuff than we ever have in American history. We do it with half the number of people because I- we use computers and we use robots and we're really, really efficient. We need to invest more in that, and the way to get us to invest more in that is not to, not to penalize us for buying stuff from China. It's by reducing regulations, reducing taxes, reducing government obstruction for investment and growth think, and profit-making in America. I think what you just said is, is the reason why Donald Trump was elected, because I think he's exactly going to try and accomplish that exact statement that you just made. I hope you're right. I hope you're right. But it, I fear, because much, all the it, time he, he talks about... Government is too big. I agree with you. too intrusive, and, and there's too many pages to everything that the government does, and it's waste and waste and waste. And I think you finally have a president that understands that and wants business to succeed. I hope you're right, Angela. Thanks for calling. And and uh, hope you keep listening you. to the show. But absolutely, you're right. In the in in the, if if that's what he really believes, then I'm all for it. But he all the time talks about trade, 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 trade. Bring jobs back. You can't bring jobs back. Job, jobs didn't go away. Most of the jobs were lost to technology, and trade barriers and tariffs will destroy jobs in America, and would raise the cost of living in America. Would hurt the working class. They will hurt people who have low income, because they're the ones who buy at Walmart. They're the ones who are buying the Chinese goods for cheap. So if you want, if you want uh, to expand jobs in America, if you want to grow business in America, if you want to produce more stuff in America, lower trade restrictions, lower, lower tariffs, make it easy for companies to move back and forth, and at the same time, eliminate regulations, wipe them out, cut taxes. I would slash taxes. Make it, make it uh, incredibly profitable to invest in America. Make it profitable, incredibly profitable to employ in America. Make it incredibly profitable to do business in America. And if Donald Trump does that, good for him, but he never talks about that. He talks mostly about how foreigners have stolen our stuff, which is complete BS. That's a zero-sum mentality. Trade is win-win. You're listening to the Iran Book Show. We'll be right back to talk more about patriotism. Hi, Donald John Trump. Do solemnly swear. A new era has started in America. 
And with it, a new attitude, outlook, and feeling of purpose. It's going to be only America first. Can President Trump deliver on his promises from the campaign? And will the Democrats come around and get on board? Or just be a roadblock? One thing's for sure, it'll be interesting. And you can follow it all right here. AM 560, The Answer. Fox News Radio, I'm Karen McHugh. In cities coast to coast, hundreds of thousands of mostly women took to the streets in protest of the new Trump administration. Fox's Mike Tobin asked one demonstrator. Now, you've made your point out here on the mall. What do you do on day two? We stay vigilant. We stay active. We do fact-checking. We organize locally. We are diligent about our local um, city and county and state elections and really work hard to protect the things that Obama advanced over the last eight years and that matter to so many millions of Americans. Kathleen Conroy in Washington. In his first official presidential visit, Donald Trump heads to the headquarters of the CIA. This new president and our entire team recognizes and appreciates the sacrifices of all of the men and women of the intelligence community of the United States of America. Vice President Mike Pence, Vox Fox News. We report, you decide. How can you get from here to there? We've got the answer from the AM560 Traffic Center. I'm Ken Griffin, taking a look at the roadways on the Eaton's Stop and Go, outbound between Montrose and Foster. And uh, inbound is fine. If I get about 23 minutes or so, if you're heading out. On the Kennedy, you're looking at 25 over here to downtown, 15 from Montrose. And on the outbound side, about 27 to O'Hare, 10 to the junction. On the Eisenhower, inbound will slow at the Plains because of an earlier accident, which is going down, stop and go from Wolf Road. On the um, outbound side, you're also a little tight here on Kennedy because of an accident blocking the left-hand lane there, 40. The Mannheim, 52, out to uh, Thorndale. Stevenson slows you approach downtown, outbound from Ashland to uh, Kennedy, a little tight as well there. 55, still slow at Veterans, outbound because of a crash. Dan Ryan is 18 in, 15 on Out Lake Shore Drive, slowing in a couple of spots. AM 560 weather, partly cloudy, low 36, currently 58. Our next update in 15 minutes on AM 560, The Answer. When The Fountainhead was first published more than 70 years ago, Ayn Rand's bold literary vision and groundbreaking philosophy of individualism captured the world's attention. Initially rejected by 12 publishers as too intellectual, the novel became an instant classic and continues to provoke heated debates. What motivates a creative thinker? Is it a selfless desire to benefit mankind, a hunger for fame, fortune, and accolades, the need to prove superiority, or is it a self-sufficient drive to pursue a creative vision independent of others' needs or opinions? Ayn Rand addresses these questions through her portrayal of Howard Rourke, an innovative architect who, as she puts, struggles for the integrity of his creative work against every form of social opposition. It's also the story of his love affair with a woman who seeks to defeat him. The Fountainhead is as relevant today as it was when Rand first penned it. The novel was also a personal landmark for Rand. In Howard Works, she presented for the first time the uniquely Ayn Rand hero, man as he could be and ought to be. Order your copy today in Amazon.com. The Ayn Rand Institute campus is an exciting online destination offering free e-courses on Ayn Rand and her revolutionary philosophy of objectivism. Whether you recently picked up your first Rand book or have been reading her novels and nonfiction for years, ARI campus has something for you. On campus, you'll discover a variety of multimedia courses covering Rand's literary classics, specific aspects of thought and how to apply her ideas to your life. Get started today at campus.aynrand.org. See you on campus. Ayn Rand was a radical thinker whose philosophical novels challenged students to reconsider their views on fundamental issues. The Fountainhead, Atlas Shrugged, and Anthem. These works have become classics of American literature that never fail to engage young people and stimulate intense classroom discussion. By offering these works for free to teachers, the Ayn Rand Institute hopes to encourage greater awareness and understanding of Rand's stimulating perspective. If you're a teacher who would like Ayn Rand's books in your classroom, visit AynRand.org. This is at no cost to you. Go to AynRand.org today. Sometimes what you want most from your car is nothing. No headaches, no surprises, no anxiety when it's late at night and you're on some distant freeway in a thunderstorm. Owning a certified pre-owned Mercedes-Benz can be that anxiety-free experience on every level. You know you're in one of the safest and most thoughtfully engineered vehicles on the road. And with an unlimited mileage warranty, you can drive as far as you want for up to three years with roadside assistance included. Your sense of confidence and adventure are as unlimited as the warranty itself. 
Now you can drive the car of your dreams and realize that nothing is everything. And during the certified pre-owned sales event going on now through February 28th, you can receive two years of complimentary prepaid maintenance and special financing available through Mercedes-Benz Financial Services. Only at your authorized Mercedes-Benz dealer. You've waited long enough. See your authorized Mercedes-Benz dealer for complete details and limitations on certified pre-owned warranties. No traditional conservative view, nor the standard libertarian ones. Welcome back to the discussion of Ayn Rand's radical fundamental principles of freedom. This is the Yaron Brook Show on AM 560. The answer. All right. We're talking about patriotism today, and we got a bunch of callers. The, the, the board is just lighting up here. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go right to Tammy, uh, and uh, she wants to talk about what makes America great. Uh, go ahead, Tammy. I was just calling in when you were talking about the individualism and why people are patriotic or why they come here and what makes America America. So what makes America um, America? What I think, think what makes people want to come here are our laws and our Constitution. That's that, what built this country. That's what this country is based on. And without it, you have nothing. I agree with you completely, people would not Tammy. People coming and, here if they did not have rights. I agree, and, and our Constitution is based on a principle. It's not just a random set of rules like the European Constitution or other countries' Constitution. Our Constitution is truly a historically unique document because it's based on, on a principle, and the principle is the principle of individualism. The whole point of the Constitution is to protect the rights of the individual, to protect the rights of an individual from infringement by its own government and by from people, from other people. So... We are the only country in history that was founded on the idea of freedom, on the idea of individual rights. And our laws and our constitutions are all supposed to be, at least the laws once upon a time, not so much the laws today, were supposed to be there to protect the individual. That was the basic idea behind our legal system. And you're right, that's what makes America great. What makes America great is our constitution, is our declaration of independence, and the good laws versus a lot of the garbage that were passed in an attempt to manifest that constitution uh, in the protection of individual rights. Is that right? Is, am I expressing your thoughts, Tammy? Yeah, I just think, like you said, that we all have our individual freedoms, and of course they've been tampered with when they keep writing all these unconstitutional executive orders. Well, it, it would be I nice. Think a, lot of, a lot of rights have been taken away, and hopefully Trump can restore them. Well, I, I, I think that our rights have been taken away now for, for over 100 years, and it's going to take more than one administration to, take, to get them all back. Thank you, Tammy. Really appreciate your call. Uh, it's going to take, take many administrations with a lot better ideas than I think Donald Trump has to really get our, our rights uh, uh, back and um, to get us uh, to where to where we truly respect the Constitution, even our Supreme Court, even many of the conservative judges on the Supreme Court don't get um, uh, rights and don't get where rights come from and don't get how to imply rights so that we have uh, hundreds, thousands, tens of thousands of laws on the book that I believe are anti-constitutional. They go against, against the Constitution. And it would take a very brave and very... Um, smart administration I, I i don't think i don't think trump is the right guy but to really unwind that and to give us back the rights and to return america to what it used to be the land of the free and uh, the land of individual rights all right uh, we're going to take a call from christian who is a patriot of vet and he wants to talk about immigrate immigrants uh hey christian hey uh yeah uh, i i think uh everything you said uh was uh was right on as far as uh, i'm i'm following you I, everything i'm hearing you i'm just really a first time listening first time calling and uh uh everything you said from the moment i started listening to uh to the end of the air today has told me i'm listening to the right guy uh, i appreciate um, that you know the the ideas you're you're spouting and the stuff you're talking about are exactly how I feel, and uh, I tell you, I, I've, uh, I've I've served this country, and uh, I've I've done, you know, been a part of this country, and uh, I'm part of the the tech community in the world today, and uh, I, I know there's lots of regulations and laws that have gotten in the way of other businesses, and I'm hoping that ours doesn't go that way, and 
you know, the the idea of this new administration that isn't really Republican and isn't really Democrat um, gives me gives me great hope. Um, I know it's not the end all be all, and that Donald Trump doesn't have it all right, and I, I get that. But I yep. think uh, I think we're headed in the right direction. Well, and I, if he employs yep. some smart people, we we might have a chance at well, getting I, the sh- things you were talking about. Well, I appreciate that, Christian, and I, I, I appreciate your support. But And, and, and look, I agree with you. I, I'm hopeful. I, I'm wary, but hopeful. I, I, I worry about Donald Trump. I worry about what he says. I hear a lot of negative things that he says that I don't agree with. But I'm hoping that, that at the end of the day, he surrounds himself with good people and he does a few good things. Uh, and, and, I, and I hear Americans everywhere that are so desperate for change. They, they just want to get on with their lives. They want America to return to greatness. Greatness in a proper sense. Greatness in a sense of freedom. Greatness in a sense of respecting individual rights. Greatness in respect of, of capitalism and free markets and, and everything America, right. I think, really I mean, uh, represents and stands for. And, uh, and greatness in a sense of embracing those people who come here uh, because they love America and because they love freedom. Right, and that's the point about immigrants. Yeah, so. no, the, the, you you talked about you talked about loving immigrants and immigrants being a, a big thing, and and I think that's true. And I think uh, Donald Trump follows that line and says, "Yeah, immigrants are great, but to make sure they're legal." Yep. Well, and thanks, Christian. That music immigrants. suggests we're out of time. Uh, we're, we're, huh? we're going for a break. Uh, you know, we'll talk when I get back. I want to talk a little bit about the illegal versus legal immigration, uh, but. Uh, we're talking about patriotism today on the Yaron Brook Show. And by the way, you can follow me on Twitter and Facebook, Yaron Brook, Y-A-R-O-N-B-R-O-O-K. Stuck in traffic? We've got the answer from Just the AM560 Traffic Center. I'm Ken Griffin, taking a look at the roadways on uh, the you want me to tell Andre to hold on? Right there, What's that? To, uh, foster on the Kennedy slow you want me to tell uh, uh, Andre to hold on? Sure, to we've got a seven-minute segment. And we can definitely get to Andre. Seven back out to the airport. Yo, Montrose to uh, Cumberland on the Eisenhower at the Tri-State. Got an accident. Three left lanes are blocked off, and uh, we are a stop and go there from about Wolf Road or so. And outbound, we have a crash as well. This got the left lane block at the Kessie, so you're going to see some delays there. On the uh, Stevenson, stop and go outbound, Ashland to Kessie, inbound tight around the, uh, uh, talking to the uh, Dan Ryan. Dan Ryan is about 18, coming in and 16 if you're heading back out. Outbound tight from 59th to uh, Chicago. Uh, 57 outbound slows at Halstead to around 107th Street. AM 560 weather, partly cloudy, low 36, currently 58. Next update in 15 minutes on AM 560, The Answer. For 30 years, the Ayn Rand Institute has been on the front lines of the culture wars, introducing millions of students to Ayn Rand's books and ideas, educating young intellectuals who now teach at universities around the world, and speaking out in defense of free speech, free markets, free minds. You can join their battle for reason, individualism, and capitalism here in Chicago and around the nation by making your contribution today at aynrand.org slash support. That's A-Y-N-R-A-N-D dot O-R-G slash S-U-P-P-O-R-T. Somewhere in America, at just this moment, as you sit listening to this radio show, there's a young person waiting to discover Ayn Rand's novels, waiting to have his or her life changed by the beauty of Ayn Rand's art and the logic of her ideas. Through ARI's free books to teachers program, we have delivered more than 3 million copies of Ayn Rand's books to schools in every state. You can help us reach young minds today. Make your tax-deductible contribution now at aynrand.org slash support. If I only had more leads, if I only had more prospects to sell to, sound familiar? The Sales Prospecting Group is ready to help you take your business to the next level. The Sales Prospecting Group is a local Chicagoland company that has helped hundreds of companies nationwide to secure new business by getting them in the door. The Sales Prospecting Group will get you appointments with qualified prospects to help you grow your business. They don't use contract labor or offshore callers. Their in-house staff of business account executives are highly trained, professional, and effective. The Sales Prospecting Group will build a custom campaign specifically for your business. They know how to navigate complex corporate hierarchies to get to the right people and get you connected with them. The Sales Prospecting Group specializes exclusively on B2B sales. Call the Sales Prospecting Group now to learn how they could help your business grow in 2017. 630-701-9052. 630-701-9052. The Sales Prospecting Group. It's time to grow. Intrigued. 
inspired, and possibly even angered. Welcome back to the Yaron Brooks Show on AM560, The Answer. All right, we are talking about uh, patriotism and uh, Donald Trump and trade and a bunch of different things. But we, we, I, I did want to comment quickly on this illegal immigration thing. I, I'm going to get back to it. We'll have to do a show on this. It's hard to do in two seconds. But let me just say this. I'm all for all immigrants coming into this country legally. But we have to recognize the fact that we as a country have made it really, really hard to get into this country. We've made it almost impossible to come here legally. We've restricted immigration in so many different ways. And by the way, this is a democratic thing, right? It's a democratic thing. It's, 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 it, Republicans were supposed to be the party pro-immigration. Certainly Reagan was pro-immigration. But since 1968, we've made it very difficult to get here, to come and work, to come and actually do something that is, uh, you, you know, that, that to, to actually live in the United States by producing and not to be a, a leech. So I understand completely people who try to get here illegally. I understand that because we have made our laws are so stupid. Our laws are so restrictive that I can completely understand people who came here illegally. I mean, I, I often say I came here illegally. I came as a student and then it took me. 13 years to get citizenship and I went through all the hoops and all the visas and all the nonsense and all the BS in order to get to a point where I could become an American citizen. If I couldn't have done that, if I couldn't have come here legally, I would have found a way illegally to do it. My life is more important than, than immigration laws and, and irrational immigration laws, which is what we have today. I didn't come to this country to leech off of it. I came here to produce and to create and to, and to build a life for myself, my family, and my kids. And I was not going to give that up. And I respect people who won't give that up. Respect people who admire this country because it is the land of freedom, because it is the land that offers them opportunity to live in a way that they can't live anywhere else in the world and who want to come here for that. All right. And we're going to switch topics quickly, uh, go back to the issue of patriotism. And Andre wants to talk about patriotism and Russia or something like that. Go ahead, Andre. What's up? Yeah. Uh, hello, Mr. Yaron Brook. Uh, I am uh, I, I'm originally from Russia. I've lived there for 15 years, and uh, I moved legally to the United States. Good. Um, Good for you. With my father and my family. Uh, and I wanted to say that uh, patriotism right now is a very discredited term, like uh, the left, the right, uh, liberalism, and conservative. Because I think for the most people, uh, patriotism means irrational uh, uh, behavior that you support your country uh, yeah. irrationally without any um, understanding why do you support it just because you have born it uh, you were born in it yeah i agree I with you andre it's been uh, russia for yeah. 15 years i've seen it in um united states I've i i agree because often right because now because often patriotism is irrational often patriotism is only emotional often patriotism is just an accident of I was born here, therefore I love this place, therefore I support it, therefore I'm willing to fight for it. Even if, let's say in the case of Russia right now, you have an autocrat like like Putin running things, people are patriotic, or like Germany under you know under Hitler or whatever. So patriotism has got a bad name because it is often page, not objective patriotism, but subjective, but but emotional, and driven by irrationality, as you've described. But I would differentiate that from what I consider rational patriotism. Rational patriotism is patriotism for a country that represents truly pro-human values, that represents freedom, that represents individualism. And I think anybody who comes to America and thinks about why they want to live in America and values America for the right reasons, that's patriotism and that's the right, right. kind of patriotism. So I worry... I agree with you. I, I worry about the irrational patriotism. And what happens is the irrational people give patriotism a bad rap, a bad uh, reputation. Does that make sense? Yeah. Just I think that uh, using this term right now when most people understand it as irrational behavior is not the right thing to do. And probably uh, in the discussion of this issue, um, we should you know, develop a new term and uh, well, I, show people that yeah. uh, the ideas and the people and the ideas they embrace, the philosophy they embrace, uh, is 
more important than the country in which you were yeah. born. I mean, I agree with you. I only would say that starting a new term is very difficult. So I would say rational patriotism. Rational patriotism. So patriotism based on thinking, based on ideas, based on uh, 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 values. Thanks, Andre. Thanks for calling. I completely agree with you. Uh, it, it is, and I think the way Donald Trump uses it is dangerous. And I think the way Donald Trump uses it is not necessarily in the rational sense of the word. And as a consequence, uh, he uses it more as a nationalist term, more as nationalism. And this way he ties it to trade, which is completely irrational. It's irrational to have tariffs. It's irrational to have trade barriers. It's irrational to talk about other countries stealing our wealth when we're trading with them, which means it's a win-win situation. All those things are irrational. And then to defend all that in the name of patriotism gives America and patriotism a bad name, a bad name. And, and this is my biggest, one of my biggest critiques of Obama, of Obama, see, of, of, of Trump, is that he does this. And it's wrong. And it's not, it, it's really bad for the country, for each one of us as individuals. All right, I'm going to get to this call from uh, Pre-T, but I'm going to do it after the break. We've only got about 50 minutes, uh, 50 seconds right now uh, before the break. So I, I, I want to give a chance to, to, to talk. Um, I want to encourage you to, to follow me on Twitter. And, and to like me on Facebook, it's Yaron, Y-A-R-O-N, Brook, B-R-O-O-K. And actually, on Facebook, it's Y Brook, Y-B-R-O-O-K. And of course, I'm here, uh, uh, you know, on on, um, on this station every week. So uh, please keep on listening. You can also uh, look me up on iTunes. I have a podcast. So just Google me or, I, you know, put, put my name on YouTube and you'll find a bunch of great videos of me giving some great lectures. I'm not the most modest person, but I think I have reason not to be too modest. We'll be back to talk to Preeti after this break. When The Fountainhead was first published more than 70 years ago, Ayn Rand's bold literary vision and groundbreaking philosophy of individualism captured the world's attention. Initially rejected by 12 publishers as too intellectual, the novel became an instant classic and continues to provoke heated debates. What motivates a creative thinker? Is it a selfless desire to benefit mankind, a hunger for fame, fortune, and accolades, the need to prove superiority, or is it a self-sufficient drive to pursue a creative vision independent of others' needs or opinions? Ayn Rand addresses these questions through her portrayal of Howard Rourke, an innovative architect who, as she puts, struggles for the integrity of his creative work against every form of social opposition. It's also the story of his love affair with a woman who seeks to defeat him. The Fountainhead is as relevant today as it was when Rand first penned it. The novel was also a personal landmark for Rand. In Howard Work, she presented for the first time the uniquely Ayn Rand hero, man as he could be and ought to be. Order your copy today at Amazon.com. Consult your tax professional before investing. Let me ask you a question. Can you keep your 401k or IRA safe from the death of the dollar, continued rampant Fed spending, political corruption, and from the possible new Cold War with Russia? If you answered no, then listen up. Fortunes are going to be made and lost over the next few months. It's time you took action. Over 50,000 people have requested our Gold IRA Investment Guide to learn how to protect their retirement savings. Now it's your turn. We are Advantage Gold, the number one rated gold IRA company in America by Trustlink. Right now, we are giving away a free copy of our new gold IRA protection guide to anyone with an IRA, 401k, or retirement account that is over the age of 55. Just call 1-800-900-8000 right now, and we will help teach you how to keep your retirement savings away from the government and safe in your pocket. Just call today at 800-900-8000. That's 800-900-8000. Representatives are standing by. Call 800-900-8000 today. You're Ron Brooke. Executive Director of the Ayn Rand Institute speaks to audiences around the world, promoting Ayn Rand's ideas in talks and books. Now, he's on your radio, here on AM560, The Answer. Hey, thanks everybody for listening today. It's, this is the Ron Brooks Show. And uh, we're talking about patriotism, we're talking about some other issues, Trump and free trade and other things, uh, but all centered around this idea of rational patriotism versus irrational patriotism. I'm big on rational patriotism. The idea, the idea of loving a country because of the ideas it represents when those ideas are good ideas, those ideas are pro-individual rights ideas, those ideas are pro-freedom ideas. That's why I'm a patriot for America, not a patriot for any other country. Um, but I also want to take this call from Preeti, who's been waiting quite a bit of time. So hi, Preeti. How's it going? 
Hi. I hope I'm, I hope I'm not Hello? butchering your name. Hello? Yeah, go ahead, Preeti. Hi. Um, hi, my name is Preeti. And uh, if uh, patriotism is about um, uh, defending the values that your country stands for, then uh, how can we be friends with countries like Saudi Arabia? And if we severe t ties with countries like Saudi Arabia, what happens to our energy needs? And how would an objectivist answer this question? Sure. I mean, I, I don't think we should have ties to Saudi Arabia. I think Saudi Arabia is an enemy of the United States. I don't think it's our friend. Uh, Saudi Arabia funds uh, radical Islamic uh, ideology all over the world, including in the United States, in mosques in the United States, is respond where, where people are radicalized towards terrorism and to kill Americans. Saudi Arabia, if we want to do what Donald Trump said yesterday, which is to eradicate uh, Islamic totalitarianism, then uh, the number one thing we need to do is, is penalize Saudi Arabia for their behavior, and that means cutting off all ties to them. Now, to begin with, cutting off all ties, it might, it might mean a lot more than that, depending on how they behave. But what, is, what does that mean for, for energy? It doesn't mean much for energy. I mean, we have today in the United States um, plenty of oil reserves to, to take care of ourselves. Mexico has a lot of oil, the North Sea. And the fact is that if we really wanted to, um, and it, we could militarily go to Saudi Arabia and take the oil fields and control the oil and tell the royal family, with all due respect to them, to go shove it. Because the royal family... The royal family, since when do we accept the idea that the royal families own stuff, that they control stuff? So I would, I would uh, prefer to, to return the oil that was discovered by American, French, and British companies, developed by American, French, and British companies, and stolen by the Saudi royal family. I would prefer to return those to uh, proper ownership, to private ownership, rather than grovel before a Saudi king and, uh, and uh, what do you call it, uh, legitimize what they are doing in the world, sanction what they're doing in the world to radicalize uh, Muslims every way towards anti-Americanism and terrorism. So I agree with you. Uh, you know, we should not have anything to do with Saudi Arabia. That makes sense? But does that mean we should go to war with Saudi Arabia? Uh, potentially. If they continue to fund our enemies, then absolutely. But war for Saudi Arabia is not a big deal. Saudi Arabia basically has a very little military uh, they depend on the United States completely for military support and for military defense. Uh, a war with Saudi Arabia would be very short, very easy to win, and would not require uh, much of us. But I, I, I'm not advocating for that. What I'd first advocate is cutting off ties and putting huge amount of pressure on them to change their ways uh, and, and make it clear that we view the, the way they run the government and their ideology as anti-American and evil. Preeti, thank you for calling. We're, we're out of time, basically. You've been listening to your Ron Brooks show. We've talked about patriotism. Think about are you a patriot and what that means. Be a rational patriot. Thanks. This is the Ron Brooks show signing off. This has been the Iran.